In the current world that we live in, we are all chronically online and constantly looking at a screen. Either it's our phone, our laptop, tablets, or desktop monitor, or maybe a TV for that matter. They are all screens, but they are probably made out of different display technologies. We've heard of TN panels, IPS, VA panels, mini LED, micro LED, OLED, QLED, and now there's something new called QD LED. In this video, I want to talk about the new QD LED in particular. This is my first time diving into these type of videos, so do let me know whether or not you like these kind of videos, and also do let me know down in the comment section below what other topics do you like us to talk about in the future. While you're on it, do give us a like and subscribe as well because that will help us out a lot. So recently, during the Society of Information Display, SID 2024, Samsung showed off the new QD LED display, also known as Quantum Dot Light Emitting Diode Display. The name itself, even though it is very confusing and similar to many other terms that are used in the market right now while describing TVs, the naming itself is very important. We'll get into that later in a second. Samsung's QD LED demo display is rather interesting here. It's an 18.2 inch screen that has an impressive resolution of 3200 by 1800 pixels resulting in about 202 ppi with an FW brightness of 215 nits. I'm not sure FW here means full width half maximum but either way that's the value that they provided. The panel is also printed using inkjet and unfortunately we do not have the refresh rate or the pixel response time but it is still in demo phase anyway. So those details are to be finalized when the technology is to be ready for consumer market in the future. So I told John, my colleague, about this QD LED technology and the first question that he asked me is, what's the difference between quantum dot and OLED? Well, I immediately responded that quantum dots do not have burn-in issues that plague OLED displays. Quantum dots are inorganic, unlike OLED. The O in the OLED stands for organic, by the way, so it will deteriorate like any organic beings. Then I continue to ramble on about how quantum dots work. It needs an external light source to excite its electron to a higher level, reaching a metastable state. Then that electron will drop back down to a more stable state. And to lose that amount of energy is by emitting a photon or light in a particular frequency. In a way, it is similar to laser but they are both for different usages. Then John asked me, let's just say if it requires a backlight, then does that mean that we can't get through blacks and per pixel dimming like OLED displays? Technically, what we have with the current QLED TVs are exactly what we are experiencing. You see, the QLED TVs that we can go out and buy right now uses a blue light source to excite the quantum dots into a higher level of energy, then let them go back down into a steady state by emitting a certain frequency of light, presumably the green and also red light frequency because RGB, you already have the blue light, so now you need green and red. I found this excellent YouTube video that they took apart a TV and used a spectrometer to test it layer by layer to see what each of the layer does to the backlight. For this TV in particular, a blue light source is used to excite the quantum dots and those quantum dots then convert blue light into green and red colors. To achieve a better contrast ratio, a lot of displays now employ a technique called dimming zones. The array of backlight LEDs will have varying levels of brightness depending on what image is shown on the screen. It is better than having the entire backlight turned on at all times at a constant brightness, but dimming zones will create a halo effect on the screen. The most prominent is when we are looking at a white subtitle on a black background. To eliminate the use of backlight entirely, there is another technology called QD OLED. It's essentially replacing the backlight with another layer of OLED and that combines the best of both worlds since you get OLED's fantastic contrast ratio and super deep black levels, while QLED has vibrant colors and better brightness levels. But since it is using an OLED backlight, it will eventually burn in. It is just inevitable. And this is where Samsung's latest QD LED comes into play. It's the same as the current QD OLED screen technology that we have, but without the organic part. 
Hence, it won't have any burn-in issues. That means every quantum dot will sit below an LED. It can emit light on its own without the need of a backlight. Well, technically not a full array backlight. It's just that every quantum dot has its own backlight. However, there are no other additional information provided at this point in time. I presume that the QD LED is a step forward of the existing QD OLED displays by eliminating the organic part and it would essentially last forever. From what I can find out, the QD LED is using cadmium-free quantum dots but I can't find any information on Samsung's website. If QD LED is indeed going to be a thing, then I think it will be the absolute best display that we can get at that point in time. It will have the best of everything. Great brightness, magnificent colors, deep blacks, and most importantly, no burn-in. In theory, the pixel response time should be great as well as it does not have an LCD layer to control which pixel should be lit or turned off. Maybe about 0.2 milliseconds? I'm not too sure about that. We will have to wait and see where this technology goes. Currently, there is no roadmap on when QD LED displays will be available for purchase. But maybe in a few years time, if things play out nicely. Maybe in 2026 or 2027. Yeah. And that's all that we have to share with you in today's video. It's a topic that piqued my interest and I couldn't get it out of my mind. So when I did find out all of the answers that I was looking for, I thought of just making it into a video so I can share what I found with you guys as well. So if you like this kind of video, then do hit that like button and subscribe to our channel while you're at it. And remember to let us know if there are any other questions or topics that you want us to talk about next. So yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video.